And I believe that's my cue. Good afternoon. My name is Andy Huckaba with Huckaba and Associates. I serve as chair of the Lenexa Chambers Legislative Committee, and it's my honor to moderate today's forum featuring the candidates for the Kansas Senate District 21, which includes the entire city of Lenexa, a portion of Nor Northern Overland Park. On behalf of the Johnson County Public Policy Council, a collaboration of all 10 area local chambers of commerce, and in particular on behalf of today's co-hosts, the Overland Park and Lenexa Chambers, I'd like to welcome everyone. Joining me are incumbent Kansas Senator Dinah Sykes, the Democratic candidate, and Tom Bickamer, the Republican candidate. You can read about their backgrounds and experience at our Public Policy Council website, www.votejoco.com. Also joining me as timekeeper is Kevin Walker from the Overland Park Chamber. I'll briefly share the format for our forum, which will include two minute opening statements by the candidates, a moderated question and answering period during which candidates will each have one and a half minutes to respond, followed at the end by two minute closing statements. Today's questions, which focus on business issues, were developed by the Public Policy Council. Due to time constraints, there will be no follow-up questions, formal rebuttal time, or viewer participation, so the webinar's Q&A and chat functions have been disabled. Candidate speaking order has been randomly determined in advance with the candidates and will rotate throughout the program. Now, let's begin with our opening statements. We will begin with Senator Dinah Sykes. All right. Thank you, Andy, and um, thank you to the Johnson County Public Policy for putting this together, and thank you for the viewers for being an engaged voter. Um, I appreciate that. So I am Senator Dinah Sykes, and I am running for my second term because Kansas should be a state where everyone has access to affordable health care, a world-class public education, a legislature that solves problems instead of creating them. In my first term, I learned that the voice of a frustrated parent is just as effective on the legislators as it is on my own children. Through bipartisan legislation, we made several advances. We were able to uh, reverse the Brownback tax experiment. We were able to end litigation, a decade long litigation on school funding. Uh, we made advances in a bipartisan transportation plan. They're very excited for the economic development of our state and investments in early education. I don't feel that my job is finished. There is still more to do. Thank you. Thank you, Dinah. And now to the Republican candidate, Tom Bickamer. Hello, I am Tom Bickamer. And let's start with who I am not. I'm not Donald Trump or Joe Biden. I'm not Roger Marshall or Barbara Boyer. I'm not a, lip, a bleeding heart liberal or a right wing conservative. I am Tom Bickamer. And while it's true I've never run for public office, I would submit that I've spent a lifetime preparing for this moment. Who I am always starts with being a man of faith, a husband, and a father. I wouldn't be here today without the love and support of my wife, Mary. We started a home building company in 1982 that supports hundreds of jobs and contributes millions of dollars each year to our local economy. Building is what I do. These times more than ever call for building consensus, not division. For me, there can be no greater calling than to dedicate my business and community experience to serving as your next state senator. Andy. Thank you, Tom. Next, we'll proceed to our question and answer. Uh, candidates will have a minute and a half each to respond and the speaking order will rotate with each question. We'll start our first question with Tom Bickamer. Question one, as a candidate, what are your top three policy issues? I would say the three top policy issues are the over cost expense of healthcare and prescription drugs, 
property tax uh, uh, reform that's transparent for our citizens and a fair and stable budget that will be difficult for our legislators to tackle this coming legislation season. Thank you, Tom. Edina. Uh, I would say economic recovery, you know, repairing the damage from COVID-19, um, public education adequately and equitably funding our education. <clears throat> You know, our um, Kansans are our greatest resource and we have to make sure that they are well educated. And third, you know, representing the people, you know, working in the light of the day, listening to and respecting and learning from constituents. Thank you, Dinah. Question two for Dinah. How would you propose to balance the state's budget? What specific budget cuts would you support? And what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? You know, in the short term, we have to, you know, survive COVID-19. I, fortunately, over the last two years, we've had a governor who has been very um, cautious and fiscally conservative in her budget. Um, she has had an ending balance, which is the statute required 7.5%, which has not been um, done over the last probably 10 years prior to her being in office. So that's given us a little bit of wiggle room to move forward. But, you know, I think moving forward, we have to protect education, also um, protecting our Department of Commerce. You know, right now we are in a, a lot of East Coast companies are looking at the Midwest, Kansas in particular, and how we can build on that. Um, so I think it's, it's going to be hard decisions um, moving forward, but just um, making sure that we don't take those economic development tools away, but also, you know, having those conversations with small businesses to have where are the ways that we can move forward. Thank you, Dinah. Tom, uh, how would you propose to balance the state budget? What specific budget cuts would you support and what revenue enhancements would you consider, if any? Candidly, the uh, economic consequences of the pandemic will make for hard budgetary decisions for the legislators elected this November. They better have the business acumen, courage and compassion to craft a budget that is both efficient and effective. I come from a construction background, so the analogy I'm gonna use for budget cuts is that they should be made with a coping saw, not a chainsaw. I'm also a believer in zero-based budgeting. In any budget, whether you're a small business or a 500 company or the state, better have realistic uh, revenue projections. No pun intended, but the bottom line for our legislators is that they have a fiduciary responsibility to wisely spend their constituents' hard-earned money while adequately addressing the safety, educational, and human services needed by our communities. Thank you, Tom. Question three, back to Tom again. What would you do to grow and further develop the state's workforce? Well, there's a couple of things that I'd like to mention there. Uh, the first is uh, I serve on my industry's workforce development committee. And one of the things that I've come to understand is that there has to be a collective, uh, a collaborative effort between government, industry, and our secondary and post-secondary schools. It's absolutely critical to growing our state's skilled labor base. As for attracting new business, Strengthening our, our Commerce Department's marketing efforts to promote our transportation system, our intermodal capabilities, and our low cost of living are all important uh, aspects that Kansans can uh, certainly tout as a, a great state. Kansas has a lot to offer. This is an area that I think I could bring an energetic entrepreneurial spirit to. So why not strive to be an economic leader in our country? I think it's time we shed our image as a flyover state. 
Thank you, Tom. Dinah. Uh, thank you. So one thing that we discussed this last legislative session that did not go through was an education program um, for Kansas students and looking at the different areas of our state and those top 10 areas that we're needing um, economic um, investment. We don't have the workforce that we're needed. So Johnson County may look very different than Garden City or um, Beloit. So um, working with this Department of Commerce, making sure that through um, trade schools as well as our four-year um, colleges that we're looking at what do we need to invest in and then providing um, some scholarships to help for those students who are wanting to do um, those careers. Also, you know, when recruiters are going into those different communities, those recruiters need to look like that community. Um, if a white over 65 year old man is going into Wyandotte County talking about engineering, um, those students don't see themselves in that situation. So we need to broaden our um, recruiters and people who are out there marketing our state so that we see the diversity and um, people see themselves achieving those um, positions. Thank you, Dinah. Question number four, Dinah, what are your views on K through 12 public education funding? No, I think um, this last four years, we have worked very hard to end the litigation and we are on track to um, fully fund that. Um, you know, we saw last session as members on the far right are wanting to already destroy that funding and put in um, complicated equations to do that. So, you know, we have to protect that. We have to continually um, be engaged and looking at making sure that we are hitting those benchmarks. Legislative post audit, we have those um, resources available and they're in statute so that we're looking. But, um, you know, instead of attacking our teachers and our um, administrators, we need to be working with them and working with Department of Commerce and making sure that we are educating for the careers that are going to be five years from now, 10 years from now, not just looking at what did we need in over the last decade. Thank you, Tom. Well, let me just start out by saying my mom was an elementary teacher. My daughter was a middle school uh, ESL teacher. My wife and I are founding board members of the Promise to Learning Foundation. So I believe in the transformative power of education. Irrespective of the current state of our economy, the fact is that the Kansas Supreme Court has ruled that the state school budget must be constitutionally funded by the year 2023. That is our legislators' responsibility. And as the next state senator, I accept that responsibility. Thank you, Tom. Uh, question number five, this is for Tom. What types of economic development policies will you support to encourage job growth and business expansion in Kansas? Well, I think we've touched on that a little bit. Uh, the one thing too that um, that we might touch on a little bit is some of the state stimulus programs. Uh, I am a uh, supporter of those programs. Uh, they're important for they're important tools for our Commerce Department to use for recruiting new businesses. There's been some criticism leveled at those programs, and I think it's because. Sometimes they don't get the uh, oversight that they should receive. So while I support these programs, I also think it's important that the legislature does a better job of demanding accountability when measuring the, uh, a particular program's return on their investment. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Dinah. Um. Under the Brownback administration, we had decimated our Department of Commerce. And um, I worked very hard um, with Governor Kelly and several of our chambers of commerce across the state 
uh, across the state um, as we were trying to confirm Secretary David Toland. Um, I think he is a phenomenal leader. Um, he is doing great things in our Department of Commerce, recruiting new businesses. Um, we have to protect those tools, you know, star bonds, HPIP, the whole um, alphabet, alphabet soup of um, programs. You know, we do have in legislative post audit that we're looking at those, but David and his team requested outside people to come and look at our program. For the first time in over 20 years, we have a plan for the future of our state. Um, you know, I was so encouraged, you know, in May in our own district, um, Thermo Fisher Scientific, you know, they broke ground and had a ribbon cutting on the same day because they had already outgrown the space. I was like, David, it felt like it was just yesterday that I got the um, notice that we were building. So we are doing fantastic things and we have to make sure that our local um, municipalities, chambers of commerce, that your hands are not tied as well. You need to work with the Department of Commerce and Team Kansas so that we can invest um, for the first time in, um, sorry, I'm almost done. For the first time, you know, in a decade, we have a full sales force out there recruiting for our state and we have to keep that up. Thank you. Question number six to Dinah. What are your views on state tax policy being as specific as you can? You know, I think we are on the right move. You know, we reversed the Brownback tax experiment. Our tax rates are lower than they were um, at, before the experiment. Um, we have to, you know, move forward. We want to be able to fund the quality of life that we want. We want the infrastructure. We want our schools. We want um, when you need the fire department or the police station, you want those services to be able to um, be there at your need. Um, the judicial system, you know, many stories because we have underfunded them. You know, we have people who should not have licenses because of multiple DUIs that are driving because we have not had the um, funds to get it in our system that these people are not. And so I, specifically remember a judge saying, why are you here? And he was like, well, I'm getting my license. He's like, you shouldn't have your license because, um, you know, we have totally underfunded those, you know, critical services just for everyday functioning of our government. So we have to make sure that our tax structure is the three-legged stool, um, state in income, property, and sales taxes, but it needs to be level and be able to pay for those services that we want and need. Thank you, Dinah. Tom. So th there are some uh, tax revenue streams that I would advocate for uh, in the coming legislative session. Uh, one would be for online gambling receipts and the other would be business internet sales. There's also some tax relief measures that I would hope to champion as well, uh, like restoring the election of deductions for individual income tax returns. And also I would champion the reduction of our grocery tax. But the brutal uh, honest uh, where we are today is these tax relief measures will be dictated by how well our newly elected legislatures manage the current economic crisis facing the state government. So while I advocate for tax relief measures, they have to be done uh, fiscally responsibly. The bottom line is, is we have responsibility to meet uh, the state's constitutional requirement for safety of our citizens, the education of our citizens, and the human services that we provide our citizens. When we do that, we're doing our job as legislators. Thank you. Question seven, and this is to Tom. What are your views on healthcare policy? Is that specifically about Medicaid expansion? The question just says, what are your views on healthcare <laughs> policy? Okay. Well, uh, it's one of my uh, biggest 
issues, as I mentioned from the get-go, is the high costs of health care and prescription drugs uh, for our citizens. Um, I, I believe uh, firmly that we can do more uh, in the legislature as far as championing transparency issues for health care. Um, it's, it's one of those things where you may have insurance. We, uh, we all may have insurance. And uh, there's an accident and you end up in the emergency room and you find out that your insurance may not be covered because of that, health care, uh, that hospital not being in your network. Well, the hospital may be in your network, but the doctor isn't. So there's some very basic transparency issues that I think can be introduced for our state that will help protect our citizens from surprise medical bills that come a month, two months, sometimes three months down the line uh, after you leave the hospital. Thank you. Dina. Uh, I have been a huge supporter of Medicaid expansion, even carried the amendment and uh, different varieties of issues trying to get that moved forward in the Senate. Um, I agree, we have a lot of, you know, surprise medical billing. You know, over the last four years, we have not been able to discuss these issues in the Kansas Senate. I serve on the Financial Institutions and Insurance Committee and um, Republican leadership would not allow um, discussions on these bills. Um, we had a surprise billing um, bill introduced. It was introduced by Senator Boyer and because um, Susan Wagel did not want to have Barbara have any gains, we could not discuss that. I was a co-sponsor on mental health parity bill. We were not able to uh, discuss this because of Medicaid expansion. And the people who are against Medicaid expansion would not allow any discussion on these. Also introduced a bill um, paying for diagnostic mammograms. Um, these are common sense measures, but Republican leadership has consistently uh, put up barriers that we cannot have these discussions. So we must move beyond that and not let a party or a person try to just get the win for something. We need to look at what is best for all Kansans and that's how we move policy forward. Thank you. <clears throat> Next question, this is to Dinah. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Um, you know, I've served for the last four years and, um, you know, I take those stories of the constituents and they are what drive me. I serve with courage, compassion, and common sense. You know, I changed my party because I was being, um, taken away from a voice at the table because I was a dissenting a voice <laughs> within the Republican party. You know, it's those relationships that I built, even with colleagues that we don't agree on policy. You know, we have wonderful relationships. And um, at the end of the day, I have always done everything to be a voice for the people that I represent and put aside partisan issues, it's how best do I represent this district in Kansas and trying to move our state forward. Thank you. Tom. Could you re uh, repeat the question, Andy? Sure. What do you believe most distinguishes you from your opponent in this race? Well, there are several issues. Uh, the first is abortion. I'm against it. Senator Sykes supports it. Uh, the value of them both constitutional amendment. I'm for it. Senator Sykes voted against it. Property taxes. I'm for transparency and appraisals that don't penalize homeowners who maintain their home. Senator Sykes isn't. Low interest loans for businesses that have been hurt by the pandemic. I'm for it. Senator Sykes voted against it. Candor. Four years ago, Senator Sykes promoted herself as the right Republican. Well, we all know who, how that turned out. Let's be clear on this. I will always put my constituents before myself in politics. Qualifications. 
My opponent claims she wants to bring common sense to Topeka. Well, yes, but who is better qualified for the job? During Senator Sykes' four years in office, she co-sponsored a grand total of one piece of legislation that became law. During that same time, my company supported hundreds of jobs and, and contributed over $100 million to our local economy. I know what it means to make payroll and for employees to be on the payroll during difficult economic times. Strategic planning, budget analysis, cultivating relationships, those aren't theories. They are a real reality in my world and the tools needed to tackle the challenges of a crippled economy while preserving the human services our communities rely on. Thank you, Tom. Now we'll move to our closing statements. Candidates will have two minutes each to present closing statements and we'll do this in reverse order from the opening statement. So we'll start with Tom. Who will be your voice in Topeka for the next four years? A critical time when the economic aftershocks of the pandemic will demand tough decisions by your next state senator. Decisions that will require not only common sense and independent thinking, but business experience, empathy, and innovative ideas. Electing anyone to public office is an act of trust. Trust that the candidate is who they say they are and what they say is true. And while a candidate's party affiliation is helpful to know, it's not the last word. Where my opponent and I stand on the issues matter. Qualifications and leadership matter. My resume speaks for itself. I encourage all our visit viewers to go to TomBickermer.com to learn more about me. I wouldn't be running if I didn't think I could do a better job than my opponent protecting our schools, enhancing human services, and improving our economic well-being. I believe in putting people before politics, something my opponent unfortunately lost sight of after only two years in office. Senator Sykes claims she wants the old Kansas back. I don't. Kansans don't settle. It's time to move forward, not backwards. You know, the company my wife and I started is now a second generation family business with the motto, building dreams on a solid foundation. When you think about it, isn't that what the business of governing should be about? I'm Tom Bickemer, and I'd be honored to have your support on November 3rd. Thank you. Thank you. Dinah. Thank you. Now, I've done my best to represent the people of Lenexa and Overland Park over the last four years. I've spent a lot of time listening and learning, and that's not going to change. You know, a lot of people talk about serving people as their first priority. I think my record shows and stands for itself. You know, looking back over the last four years, my biggest accomplishments, you know, passing legislation was wonderful, reversing the Brownback tax plan. But you know, it's having that conversation with a mom who was getting barriers and saying, your child hasn't tried hard enough to kill themselves. We can't get them um, the services that they need. Well, it's getting that kid the mental health services that they need. It's helping someone navigate through the, to get their driver's license when English is not their first language. You know, <laughs> during this time, it's been, you know, taking time to take a constituent, a care package, or even having multiple <laughs> constituents who call me on a regular basis, multiple times a week, mm -hmm. just to make it through this pandemic and to share their concerns. You know, it's taking time to be present and build those relationships. And that's my highest priority. So um, I hope I can earn your vote on or before November 1st. And thank you. Thank you, Dinah. So that concludes our forum.
to the Kansas Senate District 21 featuring candidates Senator Dinah Sykes and Tom Bickamer. On behalf of the Overland Park and Lenexa Chambers of Commerce and the entire Johnson County Public Policy Council, thank you for participating in today's program and providing voters with this important opportunity to hear from you. This forum has been recorded and will be posted on the Public Policy Council's public nonpartisan voter website, www.votejoco.com, where you will also find more information about the candidates, videos of other candidate forums and advanced voting details. And with that, we're adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thank you.